<laughs> what is Rona Mackay, followed by Daniel Johnson. <laughs> thank you, presiding officer. Um, I'd like to thank my colleague Ruth Maguire for bringing this important debate to the chamber. Presiding officer, children have a right to play, as enshrined in Article 31 of the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child, as Ruth outlined. But it's much more than that. We all know that play is what teaches our children social skills, how to compromise, be tolerant and resilient. Play is the universal language of childhood. Even young animals play. We buy our dogs, cats, rabbits and hamsters toys. And the benefits simply cannot be overstated of play in the developing years. However, not all children are lucky enough to be given the encouragement to play or be bought toys most children come to expect. As a former children's panel member, I saw children who were so neglected and starved of attention they had to be taught how to play. And it was then I realised what an important part of a child's development play is. Since 1998, the benefits of Play Scotland's inclusive strategic, strategic approach have been significant. It aims to ensure that no child is left out. The Play char Charter challenges barriers and ensures discrimination and stigma based on age, gender, disability, ethnicity, poverty or low income has no place in affecting children's play experiences to ensure all children feel included. The benefit to children and young people's physical, emotional and mental health is immense, as outlined by Brian a moment ago. They're able to develop social skills and responsibility, appreciate the environment and participate in sports, art and culture. This grows their identity and self-esteem and in turn makes them less likely to offend and engage in social behaviour in later life. I welcome this positive development, building on both the Scottish Government's national play strategy and the getting it right for every child approach to supporting children, young people and their families. The Play Charter's commitment to training adults so they can support high quality play experiences in a variety of places where children play is also highly, hugely positive. These can range from nurseries and childcare, schools, children's services, out of school clubs and holiday schemes. And it works towards ensuring high quality play experiences across key areas that contribute to children's development and growth and that affects their daily life experiences. The Charter supports children's participation in the planning, developing and evaluating of play services, recognising them as the play experts and seeking out their, their views. Of course, this ensures that children and young people are engaged and that the play charter is reflective of, of their interests and needs. Play Scotland's campaigning through the play charter to ensure that play is more strongly embedded within policies, strategies and key qualifications is welcome in making sure that we do get it right for every child. To conclude, presiding officer, we must all encourage our children to play and create the correct environments, indoors and outdoors, where they can do this. It is our responsibility. This is not a luxury for our children. It is, in my view, essential to the health and well-being of future generations. So I wish Play Scotland continued success in its campaign. We'd be happy to be a play champion. And I wish them well in raising the awareness of the benefits of play and providing inclusive play experiences for children right across 